It's part of history. Barack Obama is now an American name. His eloquent words have been a source of healing for a divided nation. Reading an excerpt from his best-selling book, Dreams for My Father, here's actor and Obama's former law school classmate, Hill Harbor. Barack Obama writes, we hold these truths to be self-evident. In those words, I hear the spirit of Douglas and Delaney, as well as Jefferson and Lincoln, the struggles of Martin and Malcolm, and unheralded marchers to bring these words to life. I hear the voices of Japanese families interned behind barbed wire, young Russian Jews cutting patterns in Lower East Side sweatshops, farmers loading up their trucks with the remains of shattered lives. I hear the voices of the people in Altageld Gardens and the voices of those who stand outside the country's borders, all of them asking the same questions that I, sometimes, late at night, find myself asking the old man. What is our community? And how might that community be reconciled with our freedom? How far do our obligations reach? How do we transform mere power into justice, mere sentiment into love? The words of Barack Obama. I believe in the hope of a skinny kid with a funny name who believes that America has a place for him too. His name, Barack means blessed by God. But this son of an African father and an American mother grew up between worlds, never quite fitting in until he moved to Chicago. Obama organized residents of the city's housing projects, helping working class families achieve better lives. He learned the real lessons of politics in one of the toughest schools in the country, the city's South Side, where politics is a contact sport. He not only found his purpose, he also found a home. Harvard Law School was the next challenge, and Obama was elected the first African-American president of the prestigious Harvard Law Review. With his credentials, he could have gone to work for any law firm in the country. He surprised everyone by returning to the South Side to pick up where he'd left off, working for the people. He also met his wife, Michelle, an attorney and South Side native. Michelle Obama has been a source of inspiration and support in a political career that has seen its share of victories and defeats. After four years in the Illinois State Senate and a failed run for Congress in 2000, Obama gathered his resources and announced his candidacy for the United States Senate. But outside of Chicago, he was considered an underdog. Then there was the speech. At the invitation of Senator John Kerry, Obama gave the keynote address at the Democratic National Convention. Hope, hope in the face of difficulty, hope in the face of uncertainty, the audacity of hope. It was a message of reconciliation and healing, addressed to Americans of all colors and all political persuasion. Representing the state of Illinois, he carries with him the hopes and dreams of an entire nation. Accompanied by greater anointing, please welcome one of the hottest voices in America, Fantasia. Have you ever reached a rainbow's end? Did you find your pot of gold? Ever cast a shooting star? And tell me how high did you soar? Ever felt like you were dreaming just to find that you're awake? And the magic that surrounds you can lift you up and guide you on your way. I can see it in the stars across the sky.
whether he's talking about African Americans, white Americans, Asian, Latino, or Native Americans, Barack Obama has a talent for remaining himself. By learning to live between two worlds, he has gained the trust and respect of all. Senator Obama, as you begin your career in the United States Senate, you have our love, our prayers, and the never-ending support of the NAACP. May God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us in welcoming the recipient of the NAACP Chairman's Award, Senator Barack Obama. Thank you. Uh, what a magnificent honor. Uh, I am so grateful uh, to Chairman Bond and the NAACP for this outstanding award. Uh, we stand on the shoulders of giants. And when we look at the history of the NAACP and what it's accomplished, uh, we are aware that none of us would be in this room had it been not for the sacrifices that so many made on our behalf. Uh, and, and so I accept this award in that spirit, the, that sacrifice is required. You know, they say that uh, politics is show business for ugly people. <laughs> and, and so uh, there is an element, uh, there is an element of show business to politics. And, and so I great, gratefully accept this image award, but I think it's important to remind ourselves that uh, what's at stake in our politics is more than just image, uh, that there's a substance there, that we have young people who aren't reading, that we have families without health care, uh, that we have international policies that are neglecting uh, the continent of Africa. And so I hope that as a consequence of this award, I will be inspired uh, with great humility to try to close the gap between image and reality. Uh, both for myself and for this nation. Thank you very much, everybody. God bless you. Thank you. For more